Finney Smith to inbound. Back to Doncic. Doncic pulls up, three-pointer. Bang! Bang! It's good! Doncic wins the game! Uh, open up with a somewhat personal excerpt. Um, about 42 years ago, one of the most iconic sports figures in probably our entire generation was born on August 23rd, 1978. His name was Kobe Bryant. That, today is my brother's birthday, and he actually died on my mother's birthday on uh, January 26, 2020. I would like to open this video with a brief moment of silence for Kobe Bryant. Rest in peace, Mamba. Cue the intro. Mike, check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Before we jump into the analysis, I live stream on Twitch on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 9 p.m. Pacific time. This is kind of important because the NBA 2K21 demo is coming out tomorrow. I'm also okay. giving away a ton of copies of NBA 2K21 on Instagram and on Twitter. Links to that's in the description down below. But we need to discuss what we just watched because I'm starting to see a little bit of a theme here. And it's kind of insane what the Los Angeles Clippers are going through. And I see a ton of memes on the internet about, you know, Kawhi Leonard should have stayed in Toronto, which theoretically speaking, he probably should have stayed in Toronto. He had a good thing going there. Or Kawhi Leonard could have joined the Lakers and joined Anthony Davis and LeBron James, but he opted to go to the Clippers and team up with Paul George. And then what adds insult to injury as well is yesterday, if you were watching the OKC Thunder versus Houston Rockets game, the player that Paul George was mainly traded for, the core player that the OKC Thunder wanted from the Los Angeles Clippers was Shea Gilgis Alexander, and he had a very pivotal clutch shot to send the game into overtime last night. And when you consider the fact that the Clippers had to give up Shea Gilgis Alexander and five first round picks in order to get Paul George, and then Paul George is consistently putting up the numbers that he's putting up, well, bro, that's going to sting a little bit. Because at first, you could chalk it up to, all right, Paul George is not playing so well tonight. We all have our bad games. But, dude, the past three games have been bad games. The entire playoffs have been horrific for Paul George so far. And that's very atypical for one, for Paul George, and two, from a player that's considered to be the focal point of the Los Angeles Clippers offense. So a part of me wants to give the Dallas Mavericks and what they did the proper credit they deserve because what Luka Doncic did tonight was absolutely remarkable. Are you kidding me? 43 points, 17 rebounds, 13 assists, two steals, one block. Yeah, he had seven turnovers, but bear in mind his partner in crime was no where to be found he had no Chris Tapps Porzingis but dude you have to give proper credit where it's due because in Chris Tapps Porzingis's absence you saw players like Tim Hardaway step up with 21 points five rebounds and an assist off of eight of 18 shooting you saw Trey Burke are you kidding me he actually looked like a lottery pick out there 25 points, two steals, one assist, five rebounds off of 10 for 14 shooting. That is absurd. He actually looked like a lottery pick out there. I'm not even kidding. And for those of you guys that don't know, Trey Burke was a top 10 pick in one of the weakest draft classes in NBA history in the 2013 NBA draft, which is pretty much only known for producing Victor Oladipo and Giannis Antetokounmpo and I guess Rudy Gobert, and that's about it. And what the Mavericks did was absolutely impressive. What Luka Doncic did was absolutely impressive, and I don't wanna take anything away from them, but this is more of a concern for the Clippers than it is a celebration for the Mavericks. If the Clippers won tonight, this series was sealed. Even if Kristaps Porzingis comes back, he'd come back to a three to one series lead. And I know throughout NBA history, we've seen three to one series leads squashed 
and you know eventually overcame but i don't think this would be one of those instances if the los angeles clippers won and i think the los angeles clippers would have won if we saw significantly more out of paul george and look at his stat line for this game and you'll see why I'm so concerned. And I mentioned this a little bit in my last video, but I gotta bring it up again, why this is such a big deal. Because he had nine points, eight rebounds, three assists, two turnovers off of three of 14 shooting. Dude, Jeff Green played better than him. He had eight points off of two for four shooting. Like, are you kidding me? In 13 minutes, Paul George played 45 minutes. Hell, Reggie Jackson even performed better than him. It's kind of weird to see Paul George going through this. And the problem with this is when you have to take Paul George out of games and when you have to depend on Lou Williams more for your scoring, then yeah, you do get a great boon on the offensive end and Lou Williams crushed it on the offensive side of the floor. He did everything he should have and more. 36 points off of 13 for 20 shooting, two for four from three. That's uh, that's literally all you could ask from Lou Williams. He even dished out five assists to go with it. But when you are asking Lou Williams to shoulder this type of burden, then you're leaving him on the court for longer than you would want him to be on the court for. And as a result, what you're giving up is defense. And typically, Lou Williams is a defensive mismatch. Like, if he will crush it for you on offense, but other teams will completely destroy him on the defensive side of the ball. It's kind of like a game of dominoes. Paul George isn't able to score, which results in the Clippers bringing in Lou Williams, which results in the Mavericks being able to keep in the game because, well, the Mavericks have no problem scoring on Lou Williams. And it all stems from Paul George not being able to score the basketball. And for the life of me, I cannot figure out why. We can make jokes about it as much as we want, but it's still really freaking strange to me. Like even in the Clippers previous game against the Mavericks, when they won 130 to 122, Paul George was three of 16 shooting for 11 points, had nine rebounds and seven assists in 38 minutes. In game two, Paul George was four of 17 from the field, two of 10 from three for 14 points. This is all really strange. And if he doesn't get it together soon, not only will the Clippers potentially get bounced out in the first round, even if they make it to the second round, they'll probably get bounced out. This is a team that was considered to be challenged for the NBA championship this year. And if the Clippers get bounced out as a result of Paul George underperforming, then it just means that they made a horrific trade earlier when they shipped one of their most promising young players and five first round picks that without a doubt are gonna cripple them in the future all just so they could get a player that cannot show up in the playoffs? That's horrifying. I wanna get you guys' take on this, man. What do you think's going on with the guy? It's very strange to me. I'm used to seeing Paul George perform in these types of situations. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I'm your boy, Mike, and I'll catch you guys in our next upload.